Hello booktube, my name is Kate and this is my channel Chapter Kate. Hello readers. So today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I've been doing a lot of tags and I love tags and I have like 50 tags planned that I want to do. But today is not a tag day. Today I'm going to do kind of a weird discussion video and it's going to be interesting. It could be a disaster. Like myself. I don't, I don't know why I shouldn't. So on booktube a popular topic, topic that has been going around are tropes and that's always been a topic of conversation. People are always talking about these YA tropes that they hate or that they love or that just need to go away or that people overuse and today I'm going to be talking about tropes that I love specifically because I relate to them. This is my life and YA tropes. I kind of made like a list of YA tropes and I'm just going to try to kind of ramble on each of those little boogers. The first is the excessively clumsy heroine trope. This is when they make the main female protagonist super clumsy. She's always falling and tripping over things and forgetting and she's just, oh. But she's also a badass usually, but she also trips a lot for some reason. I guess this is to provide those moments where she can like trip into the other protagonist love interest number one or two depending on what kind of book or love triangle is available at that time but this is definitely present in my life because I fall over everything I'm constantly covered in bruises burns little scrapes because I just fall into stuff I will curl my hair and like singe my hands I was walking down the stairs like in January and just straight up sprained my ankles. My feet went out from under me and it was really cartoonish. And I was just sitting there being like, help, for way too long before my neighbor saw me. And so I, I have experience with the clumsy heroine trope. I am the clumsy heroine. I fall often. People don't catch me. It's not, I don't think my husband's ever caught me being clumsy. I'm, it's not romantic. It's really not romantic. It's terrible actually because I am a professional. When I fall or I drop things or I fall into stuff at work, it makes me look mindless. So I'm not sure where these people get off looking cute in books being clumsy. Not fair. Next is the never been kissed trope. So this one is a little bit personal because I like to get personal on my little channel here. But the never been kissed trope is essentially when they make the female seem more know pure and attractive and innocent because she has never kissed anyone or never done anything sexual with anyone or she's very inexperienced and this trope is super popular in YA because of that very reason I don't know if it's to make female readers want to feel that way or um, make them feel more attractive if they are that way I'm not really sure what the purpose of it is but I never kissed anyone until I was about 20 19. I never kissed anyone until I was 19 years old and I met um, my then boyfriend, now husband, so he's the only man I've ever kissed. Yeah, never kissed anyone until then. I never really had an interest in it. I actually thought I was pretty asexual when I was in high school because I just never found anyone attractive and then I met my husband and yep, smooched to that cozy face. Though I do remember my first kiss and it was pretty magical moment. It was this dance that my college had and me and him were dancing outside after the dance was over and people next to the venue were playing like blues music so we were just dancing outside and he kissed me and there was a chick like throwing up on the road over there but we tried to pretend that didn't happen. But then occasionally we'll joke if we're out in public and someone pukes we'll be like, oh that's like our first kiss honey. We're weird, it's fine. Next is a trope everyone hates and it's the not like other girls trope. I have since grown out of this mindset but when I was in middle school and high school I had this, actually this probably goes back to when I was in like kindergarten. I always wanted to separate myself from the things that girls typically liked because I, I didn't want to be seen in that light because I didn't really relate to the general expectations of females and um so I, I definitely always tried to go the opposite route. I would choose the opposite things. Often it was because that's what I wanted but sometimes I did it with the awareness that I was trying not to be like other girls and I have since grown out of that. I wear makeup now. I do my hair. I wear stylish clothes occasionally. You know. 
But I'm also learned that I don't have to box myself into anything that I don't want to box myself into. And that if I want to wear makeup, it doesn't make me any less. So I have since grown out of that trope, which is good. Writers should also grow out of that trope. Next is the beauty blind trope. This is when the main character doesn't know she's gorgeous. Just kidding, that one doesn't really apply to me. Because I, I mean, I do have low self-esteem, but I, I have since gained some awareness that I'm not terrible looking. So, that one was just thrown in there. Next is the love at first sight or insta-love trope. Probably should have talked about this one with a never been kissed trope, but when I first saw my husband, I saw him at a outside concert that happened sort of in the town where my college was and his college was. And I saw him immediately was just like, bing, bing, I am interested in this individual. He has a nice face nice cozy face and so I was like walking around the concert venue like a shark or something and I couldn't, I couldn't stop looking at him and he kept looking at me and I kept looking at him and it was just like this weird moment I don't I guess it wasn't insta love but it was insta curious and insta interested interested and it, it definitely happened very quickly in that kind of way. It was a little insta-lovey. And the last one is actually my favorite trope to read about, and it is the family secret or long-lost family trope. Now, this is one that I don't talk about often in certain places on the internet because some of my family members do not know about this, and it is something that has been kind of kept secret in my family. However, it is part of my life, and I feel like I should be allowed to talk about it if I want to talk about it. Basically, when I was around 18 years old, me and my mom were watching some sort of show, and I was like, Mom, why doesn't our family have any secrets? And she was like, how do you know we don't have any secrets? And then I immediately was like, who's my real dad? And I don't know why it popped into my head. I guess it's because me and my dad don't really look alike. The man who raised me, my dad. We don't look alike. We don't act alike. There was never, there's something always sort of off about it. She admitted that she wasn't entirely sure because there were two people. And it was very Mama Mia situation. There were two people and she wasn't quite sure which one my dad was. She had me very young. She was only 19. Things happen when you're young. And so she wasn't entirely sure. Neither were they. And they were both aware that the situation occurred before my mom got married to my dad. So... I didn't really think much of it. I looked into the man who I was told may be my father. I looked into him, I was curious, and that was when I was 18. And then when I was 22 or 20, 23. And then when I was 23, during my internship, I got a really long Facebook message from him. And it was basically saying, you know, if you have anything you wanna ask, or if you are curious about anything, then hit me up and we can talk about it. I was freaking out a little bit because it was during my internship. I was stressed about that. My, I was getting married that year. I was stressed about that. Um, there was just a lot going on, and I was like, I can't handle too many life changes at one time. And so I didn't respond. I was kind of a chicken. And that was in April of 2015. So then in January of 2016, I finally messaged him back, and I was I kind of just talked to him a little bit. I asked him random questions like, what's your favorite food? He said fried chicken, and I was like, oh, no paternity test needed because fried chicken is amazing. But I eventually led to the question of, would you be willing to take a test? And we did do a test, and I found out that he was my biological father. It does cause some identity issues with myself, but I do have a father, a, you know, another mother. I have two brothers. I have, so, so now I have two moms, two dads, and three little brothers. And it's, it was a crazy thing to happen because I'd read about this trope, and I've always been really interested in this trope. But to have it happen to you is weird. And, you know, it didn't happen in the way of, like, you're royalty or your dad is secretly this evil guy or something like that. To see that trope play out in real life was kind of weird. So, I don't know. But it it wasn't horrible. Like, some people think that, that trope would be, like, a terrible thing to find out. But it was kind of cool because now I don't just have one family. I have two that love me and I can love them. And the more family, the merrier. It was a cool thing. And my dad is no less my dad, and my father is new to my family, and now I have all this family to love. So it was actually kind of a cool trope. But that's all the tropes in my life that I can think of right now, and I just thought it'd be a kind of weird video to make. That's all I got to say. If you would like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye!